continuation on the discussion about search and seizure. We go first to the particular description of the items to be seized. And with regards to general warrants. The provision requiring a particular description of the items or things to be seized is designed to prevent general searches and avoid the seizure of a thing not described in the warrant and also nothing is left to the discretion of the officer executing the warrant. Lagi po nang nating tandaan that the requirement of particularity ibig sabihin dapat specific okay dapat daw particular or specific ang search warrant bakit kailangan po na particular or specific bawal ang general okay para maiwasan ang general exploratory searches which reasonably interfere with a person's right to privacy. Ang isang general warrant po, okay? when we say general warrant, itong warrant na, na hindi nagde-describe ng things to be seized with the required particularity. It was decided by the Supreme Court in the case of Burroughs versus Superior Court and People versus Tokgo, okay? Na ang requirement of particularity is said to be satisfied if the warrant imposes a meaningful restriction upon the objects to be seized. Ano ba ang tinatawag nating meaningful restriction? A meaningful restriction is one that leaves nothing to the discretion of the officer who conducts the search. So, pag yung warrant, okay, inauthorize niya yung search and seizure, for example, okay, of papers showing or tending to show the trafficking of cocaine, is said to be invalid. Invalid daw yung warrant na yun. Dahil, because the affidavit supporting the issuance made no reference to the existence of such papers. It is also said by the Supreme Court in the case of Uy Katin versus Villarreal. Okay, it was declared by the Supreme Court that the purpose of the particularity requirement, okay, the purpose of the particularity requirement in search warrant is to limit the things to be seized to those described. Okay, and para hindi magkaroon ng discretion yung mga officers regarding what articles they shall seize. Okay? That is to prevent any abuse and any discretion. Next one is the ownership of property seized not required. In the case of Yao versus People GR number 168306 the law does not require. So, hindi required sabi ng batas. The law does not require that the property to be seized should be owned by the person against whom the search warrant is directed. So, ano ang requirement or ano lang ang um, kailangan ng batas? Okay? Sabi ng batas, ang kailangan lang or it is sufficient that the person against whom the warrant is directed has control and possession of the property sought to be seized. 
So, ang ibig sabihin po nito, the important is not the ownership, but it is the control over the thing to be seized. Okay? It's the control and the possession of the, the thing to be seized. So, ano ang extent ng search? Hanggang saan ang isang search? What is the extent? Jurisprudence discloses po that the reasonableness of both the seizure and the search does not exclusively refer to the manner by which the warrant was procured. It refers also to the reasonableness of the manner the warrant was executed, including the time and place of its execution. So, ang sabi po ng ating Supreme Court okay, na yung oras, yung lugar, yung manner okay, of executing the search warrant will likewise be considered. Okay? At malalaman po natin na reasonable, reasonable or proper yung search, okay? the object of the search must be the one properly described in the warrant. So, for example, in the case of People versus Court of Appeals, 291 is kra 400. Sabi ng batas at sabi ng Supreme Court, Kung sa isang waran, it is unambiguous and it is limited only to the particular place like a store, tienda. Okay? Kung sa, limited lang yung, yung waran sa isang tindahan described in the waran, the search does not extend to apartment units located at the back of the store. Even if the sketch submitted to the judge include the apartments. So, kahit daw na nakalagay sa sketch na, na submit sa judge, is, na isama yung apartment units. But the search warrant is only limited to the store. Hindi dapat i-search yung mga apartment units. Okay? Because this would be illicit. Because it will allow the officers to search a place does not describe in the warrant. Another example is the case of United States versus Ross, 456 U.S. 798. Sabi ng Korte Suprema dito, ang isang warrant which authorizes the search of weapons includes the authority to open closet, drawers, chests, and containers in which the weapons might be found. So, kung yung warrant, it authorizes ang officers sa paghahanap ng mga weapons. Okay? It also authorized now the officer to open okay, cabinet, mga drawer, okay, na pwedeng kinalalagyan ng weapon. These containers must give way to the interest in the prompt and efficient completion of the task when illegitimate search is underway. And when its purpose and limits have been precisely defined. Paano naman po pag ang isa search ay isang vehicle o isang sasakyan? Kung isang sasakyan naman ang isa search, lahat ng parte ng sasakyan na pwedeng magkaroon ng object na subject to search can be searched. Okay. In other words, the lawful search of the premises particularly described extends 
to the area in which the object may be found. Paano kung ang na-describe naman sa search warrant ay isang land or lupa? Ano, ano ang extent ng isang search? Sa case po ng United States versus Mayor, okay, sabi ng batas dyan, sabi ng korte, it has been held that when a search warrant authorizes the search of a place particularly described, the search would be justified, okay? A just search would include all things attached or annexed to the land, okay? If the place described is to be a land. Next one is search of third persons not named in the warrant. Example or question. Assuming nasa isang search warrant for a described place of a name owner is being executed. Si Pedro. Okay, si Pedro, he just happened to visit that place. So, bumisita lang siya doon sa lugar o doon sa premise na isa search will Pedro be subject of the search also okay like in the case of in the case of Ibarra versus Illinois the US Supreme Court struck down as invalid a search of a mere patron in a bar so what is the prevailing rule? Okay. The prevailing rule is that a warrant to search a place does not extend to the authority to search all persons in the place because the police have no probable cause to search and detain a person not particularly par particularize in the warrant. So, tanda, bawal po. Okay? Bawal daw po na kung yung tao ay isang bystander lang o isang namisita lang, bumisita lang po. Okay? Kung hindi siya nakalagay sa search, if there is no probable cause for the officer to make a search to that person, okay, you cannot do the searching because there must be a probable cause and that person should be de particularly described in the search warrant. How about the issuance and form of the search warrant? Section 6, Rule 126 of the Rules of Court says that the warrant shall be issued when the judge is satisfied of the existence of facts upon which the application is based or that there is a probable cause to believe that they exist. The form of search warrant must be substantially in the form prescribed by the rules of court. Ilang days ang duration of the validity of a search warrant. Ilang days ang buhay po ng isang search warrant. Nakalagay sa section 10, rules, rule 126, na ang isang search warrant po shall be valid for 10 days from its date. Thereafter, it shall be void. So, meron pong 10 araw okay, na buhay ang isang search warrant. Paano naman ang oras? Kailan po pwedeng mag-conduct ng search at kailan or anong oras pwedeng i-execute yung search warrant? In the case of People versus Court of Appeals 347-453, the Supreme Court said that the warrant shall be served in the daytime and such fact may, must be so directed by the warrant. However, if the affidavit asserts that the property is on the person 
or in the place ordered to be searched, the warrant may insert a direction that it may be served at any time of the day or night. The rule on issuance of search warrants al allows for the exercise of judicial discretion. Okay? And this judicial discretion is of fixing the time within the warrant may be served. Of course, it is subject to statutory requirement fixing the maximum time for the execution of a warrant. We go now naman po sa manner of making the search. Paano ba? Okay, paano ba gawin ang isang search? What is the proper way of doing the search? Para hindi masubject sa liability and responsibility ang mga officers. The rules said that the search shall be made number one in the presence of the lawful occupant of the house. Okay? Lawful occupant of the house, room, or any other premises. Kung wala yung lawful occupant of the house, it can be any of the member of the lawful occupant's family. In the absence of the latter, in the absence of the latter, the search shall be made in the presence of two witnesses of sufficient age and discretion residing in the same locality. The rule in this regard is emphatic. Okay? No search shall be made except in the presence of the persons mentioned in the rules. Example, sa case ng Panuncio versus People, GR number 165678, July 17, 2009. Si petitioner dito, okay, yung subject ng search na tao, question niya yung validity ng search warrant. Because sabi niya, wala daw siya sa loob ng bahay niya nung nag-conduct ng search. Okay? So, sabi niya, lahat na mga bagay na seized or kinuha during that time na wala siya sa bahay niya, okay, is considered to be or it could not be considered or used in evidence against her. Anong sabi ng Supreme Court? Okay. Sabi po ng Supreme Court, the search, the search conducted was lawful because the search was done in the presence of at least two witnesses of sufficient age and discretion residing in the same locality. Also, okay, in your same rule, Rule 126, the officer seizing the property, kailangan po nilang bigay or they must give a detailed receipt for the same to the lawful occupant of the premises in whose presence the search and seizure were made. Or in the absence of such occupant, must in the presence of at least two witnesses of sufficient age and discretion residing in the same locality. Leave a receipt in the place in which he found the seized property. Okay, next one is the knock and announce rule. Ano tong knock and announce rule? Okay. This is the rule if the officer is refused admittance. Okay, knock and announce. So, mag-tok-tok ka daw, mag ka, Tapos, i-a-announce mo yung authority mo. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Lagi, nyo, lagi po nating tandaan na ang mga police officers po, hindi ibig sabihin na, na meron silang warrant ay basta-basta na lang silang pumasok sa isang lugar okay, na isa-search nila. Okay? They cannot justify outright entry or bargaining into the place to be searched. Anong dapat gawin ng isang officer na may search warrant? Okay? 
In the case of Wilson versus Arkansas, 514 US 927, an officer should knock, introduce himself, and announce his purpose, and only in exceptional cases may he forego the same. Okay? When his safety is in danger, or being jeopardized, or when the evidence is about to destroy. So, this is the rule po. Ang isang officer po, he can break any outer or inner door or a window of a house or any part of the house or anything therein provided na yung following are complied. Number one, dapat nagbigay siya ng notice at sinabi niya yung purpose niya at saka yung authority. Number two, he is refused admittance to the place of directed search despite the notice. So, hindi siya pinapasok. Kahit na sinabi niya yung notice ng kanyang purpose at authority. Number three, the purpose of breaking is to execute the warrant or to lib liberate him or any person lawfully aiding him when unlawfully detained. So, lagi pong nating tandaan yun, okay, na hindi basta-basta napapasok ang isang officer. Okay? Kung siya po ay hindi uh, pinayagang pumasok ng occupant ng bahay or ng premise without lawful or justifiable cause, kahit na nag-announce ng uh, authority at purpose yung officer, doon lang po pwedeng mag-break in ang isang officer. Punta naman na tayo sa isang duty ng officer matapos or pagkatapos ng search and seizure. Ano na ang obligasyon ng isang officer matapos mag-conduct ng search and seizure? Nakalagay po sa batas na ang isang officer ay merong obligasyon na i-deliver yung property seized sa judge who issued the warrant. Meron din siyang obligasyon okay, na uh, i-deliver yung tama at totoong inventory ng property seized. Itong inventory na ito, okay, siya ang gumawa at siya ang mag-verify under oath. Anong mangyayari kung hindi niya magagawa itong mga duties or obligations na to? Nakalagay po sa ating rules of court na any violation ng mga obligation na ito, okay, it will be or it will constitute a contempt of court. Punta naman tayo sa duty ng isang judge. Okay, yung judge na nag-issue ng search warrant. Okay? Nakalagay po sa ating rules of court na ang isang judge ay may duties number one na the judge who issued the warrant shall ascertain if the return has been made. He shall do so 10 days after the issuance of the search warrant. Number two, if no return has been made, okay, after 10 days, the judge shall summon the person to whom the warrant was issued and to require him why no return was made. Number three, if the return has been made, okay, the judge shall ascertain whether the uh, check the uh, rule 126 in giving of a receipt for the property seized was complied with and shall require the property seized to be delivered to him the judge shall also see to it that the, the uh, subsection of rule 126 section 12 paragraph a with regards to the delivery of the property seized and through inventory has been complied with. 
So, meron pong obligasyon ang isang ating mahistrado, yung ating judge, na after nung expiration nung buhay ng isang search warrant, is i-aassertain niya kung bumalik na ba. Okay? Kung nagamit ba. Okay, number two, kung hindi na ibalik sa kanya, if there is no return made, dapat ay or ang ating judge po ipapasumon niya yung tao o yung officer in charge kung bakit hindi pa na-issue bakit hindi na-issue yung search okay it he will require the person in charge to explain papa-explain niya bakit hindi bumalik yung search warrant Number three, okay, kung bumalik naman yung return, ipapa-require niya na yung things is, is i-surrender before the honorable court okay, at i-deliver sa ating korte at i-submit dapat yung tama at totoong inventory. Punta naman tayo sa custodian ng logbook, duty ng custodian of the logbook. The return on the search warrant shall be filed and kept by the custodian of the logbook on the search warrants who shall enter therein the date of the return, the result, and other actions of the judge. Sabi dito, okay, pag nagkaroon ng violation or non-compliance ang isang custodian, he shall also be likewise subject for contempt of court. Next question, can you make any objection to the issuance of a search warrant? Pwede ka bang magbigay or mag-object sa pag-issue ng isang search warrant ng judge? Okay. Lagi niyo pong tandaan that in the case of Buena Ventura versus People, 529 Iskra 500 August, August 7, 2007 Sabi ng Supreme Court Any objection concerning the issuance or service of warrant or a procedure in the acquisition by the court of jurisdiction over the person of the accused must be made before he enters his plea Otherwise, the objection is deemed waived So, kung gusto niyo pong mag-object sa pag-issue o sa issuance ng search warrant, okay, dapat po ay mag-object bago mag-plea yung akusado or before arraignment. Okay? Otherwise, it is deemed waived. Sino ang mga pwedeng mag-assail ng issuance of a search warrant? In the case of Santos versus Price Gases, okay, jar number 165122, November 23, 2007. Sabi po ng ating Supreme Court, okay, well settled is the rule that the legality of a seizure can be contested only by the parties whose rights have been impaired thereby. And the objection to an unlawful search is Search and seizure is purely personal and cannot be availed of by third parties. So, ang mga taong maaari pong mag-question or mag-question sa legality ng issuance ng search warrant ay yung mga tao lamang na yung kanilang mga karapatan ay na-impair. Hindi po allowed ang isang third party to question or to assail the issuance of a search warrant. Okay, next one. We have the so-called general rule. Okay, sabi, as a general rule, the procurement of a warrant is required before a law enforcer can validly search or seize the person, house, 
papers or effects of any individual. To underscore the significance of the law, okay, to underscore the significance, the law attaches to the fundamental right of an individual against unreasonable search and seizures. The kumababasa po natin sa Article 3, Section 3, Paragraph 2, okay, may nakalagay po doon, uh, indicate na any evidence obtained in violation of this or the preceding section shall be inadmissible in evidence for any purpose in any proceeding. So, ang 1987 Constitution po natin, okay, states that a search and seizure and consequent seizure, okay, it must be carried out with a judicial warrant. Otherwise, it would be unreasonable. At yung mga ebidensya po na na-seized or obtained during the search, it becomes inadmissible for any purpose in any proceeding. Okay? It has always been recognized that the rule requirement a warrant is not, however, absolute. Meron pong mga instances and meron pong mga situations or circumstances kung saan ang searches and seizure are allowed even without a warrant. Okay? Ito yung tinatawag nating warrantless search. Okay? Kung meron po tayong warrantless arrest, yung tatlo. Okay? Yung inflagrante delicto, hot pursuit, at saka escapee exception, di ba? Yung tatlong yan sa warrantless arrest. Meron din po tayong mga warrantless search. Ano-ano tong mga warrantless search? Okay? We have many. Number one is the so-called warrantless search incidental to a lawful arrest. Number two, Seizure of evidence in plain view. Or we saw uh, the application of the plain view doctrine. Okay. Number three, search of a moving vehicle. Number four, consented warrantless search. Five, custom search. Six, stop and frisk or the so-called Terry search. Number seven, is your exigent and emergency circumstances. We also have your number eight, your search of vessels and aircraft. And of course, last is your inspection of buildings and other premises for the enforcement of fire, sanitary, and building regulations. Okay? In the exceptional circumstances where a warrant is not necessary to effect a valid search or seizure. What constitutes a reasonable or unreasonable search or seizure is purely a judicial question. Okay? So, it is determinable from the uniqueness of the circumstances involved, including the purpose of the search or seizure, the presence or absence of probable cause, the manner in which the search and seizure was made, and of course, the time or the place of the search and the character of the articles procured.